Hello there, it's Katrin from 3P's uh, Gym. Uh, we're going to talk about the Smith machine today and how you use chest, uh, get chest exercises going on the Smith. It's a fantastic piece of equipment, but it can be a bit intimidating at the gym if you see it, particularly if you see big guys on it. But it's one of the safest pieces of equipment in the gym. It's far safer than using free weights, and particularly using the Olympic bar. Plus, you can really get an intense workout on it. So I thought I'd show you how to use it, how to put weights on, take weights off, and how to exercise your chest in particular using the Smith. So right behind me, let's have a look at the machine. Okay, now, this is the Smith machine. Um, it's got a free bar at the top, which sits on a runner. So when you twist, you can see, probably if I move down, it's got a hook here, okay? Inside this runner, you can see these steel pieces. That's where the, the weight hooks, okay? So it's a very, very safe piece of, material, of machinery. Because it sits on a runner, you can't wobble with the machine. You can't overbalance. You can't uh, drop the, machine, uh, the bar on your foot, for example. It also has some safeties, and I'll show you these. These things, let me turn the You can set them anywhere, and it means when you do, the weight can't go anywhere. It hits the safety. So if you're doing quite heavy work, you can set the safety so that whatever happens, if you, if you lose control of the bar, it's not going to crash to the floor. So these are brilliant, really safe pieces of equipment. I'm um, often having to train very early in the morning, you know, literally say four o'clock in the morning. Um, and when I am and I want to lift to do chest, I'll often use a Smith. It's quite noisy. Um, and, uh, you know, if there are people around, it wakes them up. But I know I'm safe, so I often use it. I also like the fact that it's quite like technical bits of kit. I'm quite a techie, both computerised and uh, in terms of all sorts of I'm unusual for a woman that way, but I love all that type of thing. So I love this machine because it is, it is quite technical. Um, a word on how you like to find this machine in the gym. Etiquette is that, you, uh, is that you strip the bar, which means you remove weights from the bar of machines when you've finished. The reality is that most people don't do that. And it's a very poor habit, and I would hope that when you use a Smith, you will, after you finish, strip the weight, which should take all the weight plates off, the, off both sides of this, so that the next person can start clean. It's just, just etiquette. It's a nice way to treat gym equipment. Okay, so, talking about stripping weights, let's talk about how we fit weights onto this machine. It could not be simpler, okay? This is a stroke bar, it goes all the way to the other end, and at both ends, you have a free piece of bar which you can slip your weights onto. All your plates have got holes in the middle, and you just choose your weight. Um, a lot of gyms will have weight plates that are colour coded so you can tell the weight from that. Otherwise, if you look at the plate itself, you have a weight on. So let me show you. Okay, here's a plate, okay? You can see that. That says 2.5 kilos, all right? So you know that weight is 2.5 kilos. So this hole will fit in there. Okay? That is all there is to it. There's nothing else involved. You literally just thread them on, take them on, take them off. You, you will put the same weight on each end. So if I put a 2.5 plate on this side, I'm going to put a 2.5 plate on the other, okay? Um, you, if you've never used one of these machines, start off really light uh, and work your way up to heavier weights. It's about learning to use the machinery first, use it safely, um, and as you become more confident, you can add more weight. So I'm just going to use a light weight now just to show you how this works. Let me put another plate on the other end. straight on. Now, as I said, this machine, this, if you twist, you see we have a catch here, I'll do it again. You literally twist this, lift and twist this bar, you, see it this. you take it off its hook and you can move it up and down. And as long as you keep the bar still and keep this, this hook out, you can move completely freely, okay? Often what you do see, and it just takes practice, is People forget about keeping this hook out and they start to, the bar starts to wiggle and it catches and they're not mending it too and it makes a big noise. But just learn to keep the weight out, just adjust your hand and then keep your hand still and move it in there. Because there is this hook, when you lift your bar off, you, if you would normally lift, you might just lift with your, ankle, your, your wrist straight. But then because you have to twist the bar anyway, to get the back away, you end up overextending your wrist. Can you see? That's not what you want to do. So you, you will learn, as you get used to this, this machine, to lift initially with a slight bend in your wrist, so that when you twist to lift it, your wrist is straight. Can you see that? So before, 
I lifted and it ended up overextending. Okay, that's not what you want, that puts pressure on your wrist. Okay? Lift with a slight bend in your wrist to start with like this. And then when you lift and twist, you end up with a straight wrist. Alright? Now when I'm using a Smith, I would warm up on a Smith first. Particularly if you're doing shoulders, because shoulders are prone to injury. Shoulders and in fact biceps and, and forearms are very prone to injury. They need to be warm before you add any serious weight. So I would start by doing two sets of very light 20 reps in the motion that I'm going to do. So if I was going to use the Smith for, for chest, for example, I'd use a flat bench and I'd do two sets of 20 very light, with maybe a five or a 2.5 kilo plate on each end, just to warm it up. Because the way that your joints work is, <coughs> excuse me, is that um, you've, got, you've got cartilage in, the, in your joints and you have natural lubricants that are released into your joints when they start to get warm and start to be removed, but you've got to warm them up for that to happen. So if you go straight in very heavy, your joints are scratching and they are scraping, and that is how you get injury. Whereas if you warm up a bit, it starts to get lubricated and you are much less likely to injure that and you can go heavier. So let me show you, because we're gonna do chest today. My bench, actually, I've done it at a, uh, an incline, but it just takes this down, okay? I'm going to sit like this, I'm going to lift the weight up, see where my hands are, my hands are roughly shoulder width apart, can you see that? I'm going to bring the weight down, so I'm going to this safely, sorry, I'm going to demonstrate. Okay. I'm at an incline on this bench, I'm going to lift, I'm going to bring this down, Just above nipple level. You're not looking front bench, to, sorry, bump on your chest. You're looking just to come within a couple of millimeters of your chest, but nice and low. If you can't get the, bed, the bar down to your chest and back up again, it's too heavy because this is about full range of motion. So you want to be able to comfortably bring the bar down almost to touch your chest within a couple of millimeters and then back up again. Okay? If you feel any pain in either of your shoulders, try adjusting the, the angle of your elbow uh, because it makes you the it depends how we're all made in a different way, and you've got to find which way to lift find it feels comfortable. But your, uh, your hands need to be roughly shoulder uh, width apart. If they're too narrow, then you're actually using your pectorals to move to lift, not your, to your chest muscles. If you're trying to work your shoulders, you want to go wider. In terms of uh, this exercise I'm doing, which is on an incline, I'm trying to work my upper pectoral, so I don't want my hands too wide. I don't want them you know, all the way out here, because that would be just, that would actually put too much stress on my shoulders, but I don't want them uh, too narrow either. I want them to be roughly just shoulder width, width apart. And then I can feel if it's right, because as I bring the bar down, I can feel if my chest is engaged, and you can feel your upper chest muscles stretching in this position and then pushing you back up. As I always say with weights, concentrate on the muscle. See if you can feel the muscle working and you know you're doing the exercise right. Okay? So it's coming down to my chest. And up. Down. So I would do I would do um, I would do 20 reps, two sets just to warm up then I'm going to put a bit more weight on here. Okay, so, again, if you're starting out, don't go too heavy. I'm going to put a 10 on. That's perfect heavy on me, okay? So, I would put 10 on each end. serious weight on here, make sure you lift very carefully. If you've got a partner with you, that's good. They should stand behind you at the bench and just have their hand uh, very loosely around the bar to help you guide the bar down. If you're on your own, which you can do with a smith, it's because it's quite a safe piece of equipment, fine, but just take it very gently. Okay? Don't do what I'm doing. I'm putting 20 kilos on here because um, I'm a relatively fit woman, I can do that, but you might want to start with two, two and a half K plates or two five K plates. Just see what feels right, okay? So again, you're going to sit down. 
So you're going to twist your hands up. So when you lift the bar, your right wrist goes straight. And you're just going to lift your hands up, okay? We're going to bring down gently to the chest. We count. One, two, three. And push up again. One, two, three. And again. One, two, three. Just above the chest. One, two, three. Feel your chest working. Push. Okay? One, two, three. Push. The interesting thing with any sort of chest movement, a pushing movement, is the muscle building movement is what's called the eccentric, which is the downward motion. You, it sounds counterintuitive, but it's the downward motion that develops the size in the muscle. See, down, and up. Okay, so. Um, how many sets of reps? Uh, if you're a learner, uh, keep the reps quite high, so 12 to 15. Don't go too heavy. You should struggle the last two or so reps. Then you know you've got the, the, the weight about right. If you're more advanced, then start to cut your reps. Go heavier to cut your reps. The, the peak bodybuilding zone is six to eight reps. So if you're doing an eight rep set, you should be struggling by six. If you've got a partner around, they can help you. Um, uh, just keep in progressing with the weight. So once you're in the six to eight rep zone, just keep adding weight. Um, you can also um, combine this with other exercises to increase intensity. So you can combine this with traditional chest press, for example, with an Olympic bar. Um, but as I said, I often do my whole chest workout on here. I've done this particular exercise on an incline bench because it works the upper part of the chest. But you can also use a flat bench with this. It's only like a normal bench press and that will work the whole area of the chest. So the Smith is a fantastic piece of kit. As I said at the start of this video, always strip the bar after you've used it. So I'm just going to strip the bar here so that next person wants to use it, it's ready for them. Okay, so brilliant piece of kit. I hope you now are confident to use it in the gym. Push the other, push the meat heads out of the way and have a go yourself. It's a really fun piece of equipment and enjoy the gym, have confidence. I'll see you later. It's Catherine from 3P's Gym. Bye.